going to demonstrate some of my colored pencil technique uh, using the white colored Prismacolor pencils um, over a gray background uh, doing the hair by hair technique. Um, the most important thing is you want lots of very sharp sharp tip Prismacolor white pencils. Um, I prefer just the plain white Prismacolor. They do also have a watercolor pencil um, but for our purposes we just want the wax base uh, not oil base also they make those but in this circumstance we just want the plain Prismacolor pencils you need a really sharp point um, so that you can duplicate the appearance of hair on your horse uh, we have a nice uh, reference photo that um, I'll add on to the end of this video so that you can see the color that we're duplicating um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at the other video on this horse where I show the images of how this piece was developed um, from start to finish with just a plain gray base coat. Um, next I did one coat of hair. As you can see here, this is hair without any dappling. Then I did a second coat of hair to make the pony a little bit of a lighter color. And now we're developing the detail. I haven't done his legs yet because that's where I hold him so that'll be the last thing that I work on. So what I'm doing is um, looking at my reference photo first and then I try to duplicate the pattern um, just going with the direction that the hair grows. On the hindquarters you can see there's a hair whorl here and then it grows out this way and then down over the hindquarters. He's got sort of a star dapple pattern, so we're creating the little speckly, spotty, white p uh, patches that you see in a dapple gray. And this pencil, it looks sharp, but it's starting to get a little bit of a round edge, so I'm going to set it down and pick up another one. Um, these pencils do come in different hardnesses, uh, and the ends will snap off sometimes as you're working, so don't let that scare you. Um, as I was saying, they do come in different hardnesses. This is the regular Prismacolor. Um, this is a, called a Very Thin, and these are really, really hard, and I do like these to get the hair pattern, but not so much for the dappling. The dappling is going to be a little bit softer, and it, as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to use uh, some mineral spirits to blend it in. Um, I'm working the dappling over top of the hair coat and the hair coat underneath has been sealed with several layers of testers dull coat. Um, if you use any other kind of sealer what's going to happen is that the surface will be too slick to hold the pencil and you'll try to draw on it and it'll just skip right off and you won't really have any sort of satisfactory results. Okay I'm going to be quiet and just work here for a few minutes and let you watch what I'm doing. Um, just developing some dappling. Now I just like to work in a small area at a time uh, because when I go in with my mineral spirits I just want to blend a little bit of it. I use an eighth inch angle shader brush. It has a nice thin blade on the end. It also has an angle and it's called Robert Simmons and then I just lightly go over top of the dappling and you'll see it looks like it smears it a little bit sometimes if you go a little too long it'll just take it completely off but I like to just use it to gently blend the color and it gets the pencil actually down into the hair coat instead of sitting on the surface so it doesn't have that waxy look And you'll see if you work it too long, you can completely erase a dapple like that. Um, but that's good. If you put on something that you don't really want, then you know you're not stuck with it. You can take it off. And once your brush starts to get a little bit dry, you can just gently work the pencil and create nice little hair effects into your dappling.
and just softly blend everything. It's very much like working with oil paint, um, but what I love about this is it's dry in a few minutes where oil paint is sometimes a day or several days depending on the color and the thickness of the paint. Some people had asked me about soaking the pencils in mineral spirits and then using them, but the problem with that is, um, well, there's a couple problems. The lead does get a little bit soft, um, and then you can't get the nice fine lines that you want to get the hair pattern. So it doesn't really give me the effect that I want, but hey, try it. You might be able to get something that you really like. So all I can say is, this is what I'm doing, this is what works for me, um, and just try things and see what works for you. Because you don't know until you try. Um, I had seen different techniques for using colored pencils, um, but they were all for paper and nothing for hard surfaces like model horses. And you can see how you can go back into these dapples and add a little more depth and highlights. And uh, you can just continue to build thin layers of color. And work different areas. The pencils do shed a little bit and what I like for that is I'm a carbide scraper and you can lift some of those little chunks right off. Um, this carbide scraper is great for taking hair out of your paintwork too. It's just one of those unavoidable things. And so you can use this to take little dust specks, hair, pencil chunks, just about anything. What's fun for this particular piece is ponies tend to be little fuzzy things and I just I love this technique for this guy. You get that fuzzy pony look. Okay I'm gonna move on and start building up this area up here. You can use you know smaller dapples, larger dapples, um, when you look at your reference photo, I'm sure you'll see every horse has a little bit different dappling patterns. But overall, um, they do have a particular way that they're dappled that makes it look realistic. Like a dapple is a white area um, surrounded by a darker area. So if your dapples run too close together, then they won't look realistic, and if they're spaced way too far apart, they're going to look like polka dots. Just keep working in the same direction of the hair coat. This guy's got some pretty little star dapples on his hind quarter, so I'm gonna lay in sort of a nice star shape. It'll take a couple of layers to, to get this, but you have to start out with the bottom layer that's fairly subtle and then just gently blend it. You can see some of the more finished star dapples that we have on this side. Some here in the hind quarters, up over the haunches, up across his hips, and he's got some real pretty star dappling coming down across his shoulders. 
And then the dappling, this is like a little patchwork dappling he has on his tummy. So you can see all the different techniques that you can get just using the colored pencils. These are about three to four layers. Um, I did what I just showed you here. This It's real subtle, but you can see the beginnings of this star. After this layer dries, I'll spray a seal coat over it, and then I'll be able to build it up so that it's a little darker. But it gives it that real soft, blended-in look. If you try to do it all in one layer, then you'll just get this big, cakey lump of white pencil, and you won't get the subtleties of how this sort of floats and blends into the hair coat. Or as one of you said that watched the videos, it looks feathered. That's a really good description, because it does. It just sort of feathers right into the hair coat. take a look at my reference photo. You know, it's tough when you wear these glasses for working up close and your reference photo is about three feet away. It's hard to see it. He's like quite a bit lighter here, so I'm going to continue to build up the coloring in this area. And he's lighter here, and then darker up across his hind quarters. So we want to build up the light color here as much as we can. And you know, you don't have to start out with a, like this is like almost like a primer gray base color. It's not primer, but it, it's like similar to that color. Um, some horses are more of a brownish uh, color. Some horses are really dark, almost black. So it's up to you. Um, this particular horse was to be a uh, medium to light dapple gray and so I started out with a medium gray as the base coat and then I'm building the white over top of that and eventually um, I'll show you a video later on too where I'm going to add flea biting into the coat up around his neck and forehand. I mean this would be so much fun to do as a like a bloody shoulder dapple gray where you could go back in and add a lot of red pencil and uh, build up just really amazing detail Um, one thing about it is uh, it is very, very tedious. So if you are hurrying and want to get something done quickly, this is not the paint job to, to do. Um, it just, it won't work. You know, this takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. But I think the end results are pretty spectacular and really worth it. Just dip your brush in some mineral spirits. I have this little tiny jar here of mineral spirits that I dip the brush in and then wipe it off on a paper towel. You just want it ever so slightly, just the littlest bit. Because if you put it on heavy, it's just going to run down your horse and just dissolve all your work. The pencils have a wax base and the mineral spirits um, dissolve. They're a solvent, so they dissolve the wax and they allow the pigment then to flow a little more smoothly. Um, the wax tends to lay on top of your paint surface and so this technique allows the pigment to be blended smoothly um, with the wax instead of just laying on the surface. Um, this technique's amazing on paper, like you can do these just incredible drawings and they just jump off the paper, they look so real. And again, it's very tedious. When you do it on paper, the paper absorbs the mineral spirits. And so you don't really get the same uh, movement that you can get here. Like you can just move this pigment all over the surface. It's amazing. Um, but when you do it on paper, it 
uh, melts down into the paper, but the saturation that you get with it's just fantastic. Okay, so we're going back to the pencil again. I just like to work small areas at a time um, for a couple reasons. If I do make a mistake, I haven't ruined a large area. Um, and also, uh, the mineral spirits tend to dry pretty fast, and so um, I have a little bit more control over the area that I'm working on rather than having a big wet spot and then a dry spot and trying to work that out. Um, I just wanted to show you too, like over on this area, this is probably about five or six layers and the dapplings are about three layers. But I just wanted to show you how you can build up a lot more white on this area so you can add highlights to your dappling. See how I made a nice little star there. And you get some nice little bit brighter areas. So you can keep building layer after layer until you get an almost completely white horse. But you'll need some patience, so I hope you have lots of that to do this technique. Okay, back to this side. It's kind of fun sometimes. I want to jump ahead just to see how things look because, you know, I get impatient too. I want to see the finished piece. But this, this technique is definitely a journey. Um, and I think it's really worthwhile. Um, I hope I've shown you some things here today that you can try out and helped you to understand how to use this technique a little better. And feel free to post questions uh, on the video. I'm happy to answer anything that you have and let me know if you have some ideas of your own that you've tried. We could try them out and let you see how they look. Okay, 